All right, so before I get into explaining to you guys about the project, I wanted to make sure that you have a complete understanding of rectangles slash squares, parallelograms, trapezoids, and triangles. So please get this homework out that is due today. That needs to be out. If you did not annotate, are you getting credit? No. No. Um, if you did not, like if you put all your work here, are you getting credit? No. no. Okay, this side fine, this side no. Okay, um, are there any questions that you guys want to go over before we get started <coughs> from either one of these pages? Uh, number eight on the right side. Number eight on the right side. All right, so, oh says a trapezoid has an area of 35 millimeters. What is the height of the trapezoid? All right, so your answer for this one should be five. All right, this is very similar to, I think number six that we went over yesterday. Um, so it gives you the area and then it gives you your bases and it, you have to figure out the height. So what you need to do is you're just plugging in you're just plugging in the information that you're given. So with a problem like this, we know our total, right? We know our bases, which is the six and the eight. We're gonna divide it by two, and we don't know our height. So then when you plug it in, you can solve to where you get to what H would, uh, or sorry, what your base would essentially be. And then you have to say, okay, well, what times seven gives me 35? Five, okay? So it's just kind of working backwards from, um, instead of saying, here's the numbers, find the, the area, it says, here's the area, find a part of the, the formula. Okay? Does that make sense? Did you get it right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Did you do it a different way? Um, no, I did it uh, that way. But it was confusing at first, and it took me a long time to do it. Okay. What was confusing about it? Um, just trying to... Uh, figure it out like I know uh, the cheat sheet, but I guess I didn't use it, and so uh, for the base, I didn't do uh, eight and six, I did six and six and six. Okay, so then that's okay, and that might have just been reading the numbers wrong. Mm -hmm. All right, did anybody do it a different way than this to solve number eight? We all did the same. Okay, all right. Um, any other questions from your homework? All right, so number five says find the area of the trapezoid at the right by decomposing. I thought we talked about this. I didn't know which one was going to be. Okay, so can you turn your paper this way? You're allowed to, right? So turning the paper this way shows you that your parallel lines are always your bases. So on a trapezoid, you're always, no matter where, like what shape the, the trapezoid is in, you're finding those two parallel lines and those are your bases. Okay, does that make sense? So then that one would just be 14 plus 18 divided by two times eight. And that would be this work right here. Up here. All right, any other questions? All right, trapezoids are definitely going to be probably the more difficult just because it requires you to do more steps. Um, any other questions from your homework? Uh, All right, uh, on the right side. Okay, number four says find the area of the triangle. So this one is gonna be very similar to what you guys are gonna see on your test and your quizzes and the benchmark and the EOG. You have four numbers, and you have to figure out which two to use. All right, the formula for the area of a triangle is what? Raise your hand. It's the formula for the area of a triangle. Mason, baby, please sit up. All the way. Um, Kira. <coughs> okay, so we have to figure out the base and the height. Now, the way that you know the base and the height is it makes a 90 degree angle. So if I turned my paper a uh, multiple different ways, so if I said, okay, well this is the base. This is my height right here, right? 
And I know it's my height because why? The dotted line, okay? So then does this line form a 90 degree angle to my base? No. All right, so then if I turn it this way, does my height form a 90 degree angle to my base? And everybody knows what a 90 degree angle is, right? Yes, that's an acute angle. Right, so this is an acute angle. So sometimes you just gotta move your, your paper around or your iPad around depending on what the shape is. Um, and then, so this one, this is my base, this is my height. Does that form a 90 degree angle? Yes. yes. All right, so then I know that my base is gonna be nine and my height is gonna be four and a half. Does that make sense? Is that what you did? Okay, and then you just simply do, you plug it in for the formula and then you solve. Okay, that's a good question. I am gonna write that on the board because I promise you you're gonna need it on this project that you're gonna do. So, how do you identify the height on a triangle or even a trapezoid? Like, how do you identify the height? What does it have to form? Samantha. Absolutely. Good. Okay, nine times out of ten, you're going to know it's the height because it also has that 90 degree box in the corner. Okay? All right, any other questions from your homework? We're good? All right. You are not going to make a page for your project booklet that you're getting because it's going to take me a minute to get these graded. Like you probably will not get them back until after Christmas break just because it's this. And there are 11 pages, okay? Take a deep breath, it is really not that difficult. All right, now. You all need to listen very closely to what I'm about to say. You are allowed to use this beautiful thing called a math notebook. I highly recommend you spend a lot of time on this set of notes. So all of this right here, front and back. And I highly recommend you spend a lot of time on this page. Okay? You cannot use your iPad. So if you don't have these notes, or they're not complete, or you whatever, is going to make your life a whole lot harder. Okay? So this page is a big thing. This page is a big thing. Um, you can, you don't need the um, irregular shape page because there's no irregular shapes in your project. It's just strictly the four basic shapes that we have been talking about. Okay? We're not ready for any actual test on uh, irregular shapes. Just this. It's just, they're hard. Um, so again, this page and this page. These are going to be your lifesaver today. All right, I'm going to pass these out. The very first thing I need you to do, um, I need you to put your iPads away on the ground, something. And then when you get this, I need you to put your first name and your last name, please, at the bottom of the page.
All right, so right now, close your mouth notebook and just have the area, modeling area booklet out. You're good. Go ahead, babe. So close, stop drawing on this piece of paper else I will give you a zero right now. Stop. I'm not grading your artwork, I'm grading your math. I don't wanna see any artwork on it. All right, you are also going to need scissors. So please make sure you have scissors. If you don't have scissors out, or sorry, if you don't have scissors, you can go grab some from the door. And you're gonna need glue. I don't think I have any more glue over there because I'm just tired of passing that glue a bit. So this and this go together, okay? In the booklet, each page you have something to do at the top and then some questions to answer, okay? So flip through it, you have rectangles, you have triangles, Again, asking you to do something. Now, like this one says, cut out figure D. So you're gonna find figure D on here and you're gonna cut it out, okay? And then you're gonna do exactly what it says. Does that make sense? Like this is all part of like the activity, the project that you guys are doing, all right? You have parallelograms, you have trapezoids. And then the last page is applying all the information essentially that you know about rectangles, parallelograms, triangles, and trapezoids. So this is, um, it, and again it tells you, it says based on your exploration and understanding of the formulas, determine if you agree or disagree with the statements above. Okay, and you would just say I agree or disagree with Ryan. So you'd find Ryan and Ryan says, Figures A and B will have the same area because they, uh, because you multiply 12 times 20. Okay, again, you're gonna agree, disagree, and why. So again, it, it seems like a lot, but I promise you it's not, it should not be that difficult. Um, turn to the very back page, because this is how you're getting graded. And I want you guys, why are you cutting the corner of the paper? Put the scissors down before you cut something off, it's important. All right, this is a rubric. How many of you guys have ever seen a rubric in your life? Okay. This is essentially how I will be grading you on this assignment. It's not a, I mean, it's gonna be out of 100, but it's not like, oh, I got 18 right and 42 wrong. It, this, is, this is it, okay? So, uh, the mathematical content, which is obviously one of the most important parts because what our, what's our focus? Is it your ability to write or is it your ability to understand math? understand math. Now I'd really like it if you could write, that's gonna make my job a lot easier. Um, so above standard says modeled area formulas for parallelograms, trapezoids, and triangles by decomposing and rearranging parts. That will be displayed with the instructions of these.
Okay, so it's going to be very important that you read the instructions and you do what it says. You're only getting one of these. You're not getting more than that. Um, meth is standard, which is still fine. So you want to either be above or meet, right? Or sorry, above or met. Um, modeled area for formulas for parallelograms, trapezoids, and triangles by decomposing and rearranging parts of these figures with few errors. This is without error. Then below standard, which is not where you want to be. You do not want to be below standard. Um, did all that with several errors. So everybody, I want you to highlight without errors, with a few errors, and with several errors. And you might have to, you might want to have colors in, while you're going through this as well. Like you don't have to, but you might want to. Bless you. All right, thumbs up when you're ready to move on. Okay, the next one, mathematical thinking. So this is you explaining. This is where you show that you understand, not just by using numbers, but also by being able to use words and explain them. So it says provides thoughtful reasoning and explanation. Thoughtful. That does not mean the area is this unit squared. That's not a thoughtful response and explanation. Okay? And that is going to be the big difference between above and between just meeting it. So if you can say the area of this shape is blah, that's going to be a meet or met. If you explain why it's this, using those math words, congruent, equal, um, 90 degrees, perpendicular, because technically what angle, like what type of intersecting lines is this? Perpendicular. So a perpendicular line is where... There's a 90 degree and a straight one, okay? Parallel lines. All those key words are thoughtful explanations. Does that make sense? All right, um, MET standard is just provides some reasoning and explanation. And then to get below, does not provide thoughtful reasoning and explanation. Okay, so if you just write the answer with no units, no square, no nothing, that's where you're going to be, okay? Because that's not thoughtful. That's just, I don't feel like writing, so I'm not going to. Your notebook is closed. Close your notebook now. Put everything away except for a highlighter in your book. You're not even... Joshua, please get out the booklet that we're going over. Get out a highlighter and highlight this information so you know how to get the best grade possible. We are on the back, baby doll. The very back. You need a highlighter, sweetie. All right, participation. Participate fully. What do you, how do you think you get that? Participates fully. Like <coughs> Well, you're doing this independently. Like you're doing this by yourself. So how do you participate fully so by yourself? You right. Like actively working on it, using your time. I will let you know you have two days to do this. This is not due by the end of today. So you have Obviously, because I want to explain it and make sure you guys have a full understanding, but you have today, well, however much time we have left, and then all day tomorrow. Okay, so you have two days to get this done. That's how much effort I want you to put into it. If you finish this today, do you think you participated fully, or do you think participates with major redirecting from teacher? Like... I'm not going to redirect you. I'm going to sit and watch you waste your time, and then when I collect it tomorrow, you're going to get the grade that you get. I will not be like, please get back to work. Please stop talking. No, we're, we're, we're way past that. Okay? Am I, or, am I wrong? I, and I'm not that nice, so let's be real. And we're like, get back to work. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Just not. So participating fully, like Blake said, using your time wisely, being fully engaged with this activity, and you might finish halfway through tomorrow. You might finish at the beginning of tomorrow. 
there's we really should not finish today okay um shows work it's gonna be a big one 100% of your work is shown 100% okay that's for above standard shows work for 80% or more so you did the majority of the work but not all of the work and then shows less than 80% Mason, do you need a highlighter, sweetie? Do you have a highlighter? Do you need to go to the nurse? Then I need you to be actively, like, highlighting. All right, and then follow those directions and the criteria fully. So, again, following directions is cutting these right. Following directions is answering the questions fully. So, like, this one and this one kind of go hand in hand. If you participate fully, you probably follow directions, right? If you kind of participated and for the most part you got done, but it was like kind of last minute, you're probably going to follow under with a few errors because you're going to be rushing. Okay, and then follow directions and criteria with multiple errors. So at this point, you know how you're going to be graded. So you pick what you want. Do you want to be above standard, which will probably give you a couple extra credit points? Do you just want to be the neat standard, which will give you your 100, or do you want to be below standard? <coughs> The only way you get a failing grade on this is if you don't finish it or you don't turn it in. Like, you're either, I mean, hopefully your expectation is these two. All right? This one, it, even if you did bare minimum, I'm hoping that, like, the lowest grade I have to give is, like, a 70. Because, again, I don't, I don't feel like this is that hard. But... There's a lot of things that I think are, should be easy, but they're not. So, um, But again, you know how you're going to be graded. It's right here. Okay? Are there any questions about the rubric? All right, the other thing. I would not cut out all of these at once. I would cut out as I go because it's going to be a lot easier to keep this piece of paper than it is going to be to keep six shapes that are cut out. Does that make sense? All right. Um, if you need a ruler, where are my rulers? Are they gone? Okay, if you need a ruler, they are over beside Joshua. Um, you might need it, you might not. Just, again, start the activity, see if you need it to help you. Um, are there any questions before you get started? All right, if you have a question while you're working, absolutely come and ask. Um, <clears throat> but again, for the most part, I feel like if you use your notes, and you just do the assignment, I think you will be okay. All right, go ahead, get started.